Let's keep things rolling here at XFC 57. Your next fight is an amateur featherweight fight. Introducing first, Liam Forrest. So Liam's coming to us out of TMG. Very experienced for a young fellow. He's just freshly 20. He's got a ridiculous submission arsenal. Been improving his striking all the time. Stuart Ashby is one of the best coaches getting around. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's been coaching Liam since he was a kid. Really looking forward to the improvements he's made since his last fight. Yeah, speaking about his last fight, what an amazing transition from grappling exchanges he had against Ryan Bishop. You, you, you certainly know he's um, he stand the test of time with this one, but every time I've seen Liam fight, he just seems to find a way to grab a hold of something and cause pain. Yeah. Really, really good activated hips. Um, gets up those um, hips in terms of uh, close guard, any type of guard. If he gets up, if he gets a hold of you, he's going to be looking for some kind of submission. So basically today is a submission artist against a good quality striker in Declan. He's getting his final instructions. Cutman's going over to Vaseline. Here we go, the corner's turning up as well. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what Liam brings to this table. Uh, he's got a he's got a bit of a height advantage here in terms of 11 centimeters in height of a growing young body, but he's really long and rangy as well, which really helps him out with um, um, transitions. So he's had most of his fights at bantamweight. I wonder if he's just outgrown that frame now that he's getting a little bit older. Doesn't look like much fat on him there, mate. No, it doesn't, does it? And his opponent, please welcome Declan Corcoran. And here we have Declan Kikorin fighting out of Fight Club and Black Dragon Kai. Had him in the cage a couple of times today. So you've got Gavin Hayne, Daniel Lima, Shawnee Olsen, and also Jordy Lavis McBain. I've seen Declan's first couple of fights. I actually think Declan could be the next Queensland superstar in the amateur ranks. I think he has all of the tools he's got great stand-up great jiu-jitsu great wrestling i think this is i think liam's a really good test to see if he's ready to go to that next sort of title amateur title fight level there's some big words there benny looking forward to this one but declan's just getting the final little pieces over here and this is where having those really experienced corners make a huge difference so you got, as I mentioned, Fight Club Black, Black Dragon Club, Black and Kikorin, coming up against GGM MMA with Liam Forrest. Two young lads ready to get at it. This next fight is an amateur featherweight fight. B class rules, three by three minute rounds. Introducing first, in the blue corner. Weighing in at 66.2 kilos. With an amateur record, six wins, two losses. Fighting out of TMG MMA. I haven't seen Liam with a goatee before, and so he's a good in the red corner. <laughs> he weighed in at 65.9 kilograms, holding an amateur record of two wins, zero defeats. Fighting at a fight club and Black Dragon Con. Get it up for Declan Parkeran. Your referee in charge is Claire Fryer. Here we go. Is there a filling out period or are they just going straight into it? Oh, good. Oh, 
Yep. Nice, Chris left oh. one, two. Oh. oh, good knee off the counter. Liam working those long punches. Clearly improved striking. Let's see if Declan makes the adjustments here. Oh, good inside kick. Nice that he switched the stance Ooh. as well. Big head kick by Liam. Liam looks like a completely different guy to the last time I saw him. Body lock. Step over trip. And he gets it. Nice, oh, nice movement there to close the distance. Doing a good job locking up the body. And this is where that experience comes in place and not trying to rush something. So he comes up with the body lock. There it goes. There it goes again. And that's what I meant before. He didn't let go of it. So that's the experience. Not trying to rush anything. He knows he's in it for a big fight. Oh, goes he's got a great there. He steps around to his back. Oh, oh he's going for it. Back. This is how Liam finished Cooper Royal. He put him to sleep standing up on his back. Incredible. He's got really, really long limbs as well. Nice work, boys. Put those knees up the middle. Beautiful tie plum there. Liam in complete control so far, but Declan has a lot of skills here. No pressure at this stage. Ooh. Good Another shot. shot. He's left. doing enough striking to make uh, Declan raise his guard, which exposes his hips. Beautiful leg trip there. Nice pressure, nice pressure. He's got a body lock locked in place. And Liam has a great head oh, placement. Oh. And he's being able to go to town there. Oh. Liam is just control. all over him so far in this round. Such good control. That, Beautiful that body lock is just finding it so easily. He's got good pressure here, and what he's got, he's got Declan's head up against the cage. Declan's doing a great job exposing himself. He's getting that hook in, he's getting that hook in. He's got his neck. Yeah. His beautiful transit. So he's not letting go of anything. I think he's almost locked overhand. Just a complete grappling class by Liam Forrest right here. Yeah, he's got that overhook in there. Oh, he's got isolating that arm. He's, he's got a triangle from the back here, but he's only got 15 seconds. Number. Oh, he goes Number. the arm. Number. He's got, has he got it? I can't see from this angle, but it's very... Not quite sure. He's only got a couple of seconds. Oh! Whoa! Need of the head. Need of the head on the ground, I'm pretty sure. I can tell you from experience, they're not fun. They're really, really hard because you don't know what's actually happened from that point. I think he's still keen to get into it. Well, he's clearly winning the round, so I think he just wants to get straight back into it. The, round, the, the time is done. <laughs> the, the timer went off. Oh, uh, okay. There's... What a great round of transitions from Liam Fox and defensive transitions from Declan. So what I'd say from watching Liam's last fight to this one is he's really worked on sharpening up his straight punches and his transitions into the clinch. Because if he hadn't, that's where I, th I thought he may have had trouble in this fight. But he's staying on the outside and then entering at the exact right times once he's got Declan to lift his elbows up and cover up his head. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and it all comes down to guard placement for Declan. So once he has um, raised the uh, elbows up from the hips, Liam's all over him. And it's also, it's not just a single wrestling submission, uh, uh, wrestling chain. He's chaining these wrestling moves together. It's just constantly attacking, constantly attacking. And if there's a single space to get that hook in, he's getting it. What are you seeing, Adam? Mate, Liam, actually quite a, like a left flank at the moment. But Declan's doing an amazing job keeping him off. Yeah. I think it's going to be much of the same this round, but I think Declan's going to come in a bit harder, a bit more wiser. And, and once again, Declan's got... Gavin Hain and Daniel Lima, former XFC champions in their own right. So there's plenty of experience in there to tell him what to do. See, that's what I mean. Like, Liam's so rangy that he's just using the perfect straight strikes to stay out of danger when he's striking. He knows exactly how long he is.
Oh, pick an every shot too. Perfect. He's got that body lock on his... Oh, oh, he's going go. straight in the mount. Yeah. Straight in the mount. He's going to the armbar. Declan's going to attack that arm. And that was Fantastic. Beautiful. Oh, back in the mat. Declan in really good control. Kind of happened from just an overbalance at the start from Liam. Yes, yeah, certainly. And what, what you saw there is also um, Daniel Lima and Gavin yelling out, don't rush it, don't rush it. They're telling him just to relax. There's good work there for Declan listening. As we've seen in lots of Liam's fights, he can win fights off his back as well. He certainly can. But Declan very aware of what's going on in, in these positions, though. Declan's doing a great job pushing his head up against that mat as well. Really, really trying to isolate those hip movements because he obviously knows that uh, De uh, Liam can throw his hips up really quickly. But Liam's doing a really, really good job keeping him honest now because if Declan does posture up to start landing these big strikes, there's submissions everywhere there for Liam. He's got such long limbs too, so triangles, arm bars are all available. We mentioned before that 11 centimetre uh, advantage. He was using that really, really well for striking. Let's see how he can utilize that for the grappling in, um, grappling exchanges as well. Oh, he's setting up a triangle. He's got the arm in. Oh, it's close. Nah, he's out. Run straight back into that position though. I really feel like Stewart will be annoyed he didn't stand up when he had the chance there. Great head pressure too. It's a tale of two tapes here. So less than 50 seconds left in this round. Good control by Declan in this round. And once, once Declan realized that Liam didn't have a hold of his head pulling that posture down, he, he uh, basically postured up throw a few strikes from there. I expect a huge flurry from Declan once that 10 second clapper goes off. But Liam's doing a really good job limit, limiting the amount of damage that Declan can do to him by posturing up. He's getting those hips, those uh, knees on the hips. So Liam's just trying to basically lock him up here. And there's that flurry I expected Declan to be throwing in there. Fantastic round. Really, really good guard control. That was excellent control by Declan, but the one thing I wonder is, can Declan get to these positions without Liam making a mistake, if you know what I mean? Because Liam got a body lock and then sat down his button overbalanced himself and then he just got stuck. Yep. If Liam doesn't do that, does Declan have a way to get control in his own right, if you know what I mean? Not that yeah. he didn't, once he got there, that, li that little split second was what made the difference between the two in that round. Yeah, and similar thing, as he was coming up, he had his head, head extended around the left thigh, um, up, up behind the right thigh, and as a result, overbalanced. And Liam was able to, no, sorry, Declan was able to capitalize by putting a rear naked choke on that, which also forced Liam to sit down again. Yeah. And once you sit down in, in your opposition corner, they've got all the coaching. <laughs> yeah. It's really, really difficult. When you've got three, three jiu-jitsu black belts in your corner, really, really hard when you're getting your commentary from them. But here we go, round three. We get to forget everything that happened in the first two rounds, and it's going to get sorted out here. You have to imagine this one takes it. Oh! Beautiful question right mark. Kick. That's that leg, leg dexterity that um, Liam has. So if there's any space, he's able to throw them up, those kicks up really, really quickly. We can only see Liam's silverback-shaped back here, jamming Liam up against the fence. Declan's doing a great job here in terms of just pressuring him up, trying to remove any energy or opportunity he has. Good knee on Stomp the way in. Body lock. He's got it again. Sends it. Good Here job. we go. Liam's Pass. chain wrestling has been exceptional tonight. Huge improvement. Nice little switch hips. We'll go to Mount. 
Oh, oh turns on his back. On the back. And you've got to remember, he's got such long limbs as well. Here we go. He's hooks him. Hooks him. Both underhooks. There's oh, absolutely no wasting head. time here with these transitions. Doesn't you just look so much cooler when you have long legs? <laughs> yeah. I'll have to take your word for that. Yeah. Uh, looking at all three of us, <laughs> we don't fit into that category. But from here, I he's doing a really, really good job. I can't job. see where his hand is from this angle. He's transitioned but, up oh, in the mouth. He should be starting to punch from here. So really, really good transitions. He's got to maintain that right arm so it doesn't slip off the top. He's come underneath. And is he going to transition into an armbar? I don't know what he's got there. Oh, he's got an arm! He's going around. Nah, yeah, he's lost it. Got the knee right on the face over here. He's got an arm again. A oh, beautiful, beautiful oh, reversal. Absolutely fantastic. That's Man, how you these take a guys horrible are in shape. Liam went from a super horrible position and turned that one around. Doing a great job locking down the hips of Declan. So we've got 19, 15 seconds left. Here we go. Send it. Oh, oh again. Oh, again. Really, really dominant round by this ah, one. Ah, well wow. done, lads. Impressive performance on both ends. Fantastic. What a grappling masterclass put on by that point. Liam did such a great job in terms of those grappling exchanges in round three there. That's what I was just saying, like, not trying to take anything away from Declan's amazing second round, but if we saw in the first and second, if Liam finished his transitions, it was just like a wet blanket trying to get it off the top of him. Yeah. And once again, one of the reasons why Liam had to work so hard in the third round is by excellent jiu-jitsu defense 100%. from Absolutely. Declan as well. So let's see how the judges uh, score that one. But what an amazing fight. Liam had so many good positions, but Declan was not giving it away for free. Absolute grappling masterclass there. Here we go for it to become official. For the winner of bout number 10, XFC 57. Just doing a quick tally at Mansfield Tavern. Bit of suspense on who won. Okay, after three rounds, we go to the judges for a decision. And all three judges score this bout 29 28. And your winner by unanimous decision in the blue corner, okay. Liam Forrest. There's no stock lost, lost there by Declan. That was an amazing fight. Liam, let's learn a little bit about you. A six and two record, which is now seven and two. Is it starting to get easier? It never gets easier, bro. The opponents just get harder. The fights get harder. This is probably one of my hardest ones yet, so big shout out to Declan. You've had nearly 10 fights. Why was tonight one of the hardest? The pace, I think. It was a pretty fast paced fight. Fight, lots of striking, lots of wrestling. And fuck, he was strong too. Hey, you're for 66.9 kilos, you're strong. What is it in your conditioning and your training that allows you to keep that strength, but also keep that weight? Fuck, I'm sorry. Let's talk about what's next for you. Hi, Maffa, three weeks. 
Oceanics versus New Zealand and French Oceana, or French something. Um, yeah, three weeks, qualifications for Worlds. I'll see you there. And before I let you go and celebrate this win with your team and your friends and family, is there anybody here that you would like to acknowledge? I think they're behind you. Oh. <laughs> Everybody that came out to watch me, thank you so much. I always appreciate it. Big shout out to my corner, my coach, Stuart Ashby, my parents, Bajan, Charlotte, everybody here in support. Thank you so much. Let's hear some noise for Liam Forrest.